This is Kevin Nash, human being, not Kevin Nash, the wrestler. You're watching Ring Fever, there is no cure. Except maybe penicillin. <laughs> the full circle thing, when I saw you wrote that you were happy to come back to the WWE, uh, go full circle with your career, and I had asked you, does, does something of adversity bring you to that? Like, you know, to that emotional state to say, you know. The impact zone alone will drive you back. <laughs> But you, you, know, you gave, you gave no pun intended. No, they, 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 it, was, it was a great gig for five years. I had a great time there. I actually met her mm -hmm. while, I was right. a, while I was at TNA. Yes. It comes to a point when you know that your career's kind of winding down. And I think that if, if you're a Major League Baseball player and you started with the Yankees, you want to end with the Yankees. You know, it's just, that's right. it's, that's, there's, there's, there's that and there's nothing else. Yeah, yeah. And, and even when WCW was red hot, we were the Mets. We had two good years, and that was it. The, you know, WWE, WWE's been the Yankees since the conception of what we know as modern pro wrestling. That's a great comparison. Yeah, so just if I could just DH for a couple seasons, I'm happy. So your schedule's got to be full because between your movies and your spots and wrestling, it's... Plus I'm a father and a, and a, and a husband, which is, you know, as a... As a father to a 15 year old I think that's probably the most important thing right now yeah it's just it, it's this is the, the last chance I get to kind of you know growing up on a pirate ship it's kind of hard not to have a, a child that's a pirate but I'm trying our <laughs> you know, you made, you, you made, but you made a conscious decision to do that, from what I read, yeah. and I think that's that was one of the reasons why I, I stayed with TNA because it was really not, those were the, the socialization process years of you, you know that that yeah the young teen that he needs his dad and it's, it's, it's just me being gone for the time that I have in California I can I can hear it in his voice and he never talks on the phone he won't talk on the phone to anybody you know everything's texting but he you know, he talks to me every night in depth long for long periods of time because he can tell he, yeah, he just wants to talk to his dad and I and I want to talk to my son you had some adversity right with uh, with you with your child yeah around 2008 or so she got sick and I had to leave WWE and um, but now she's doing fantastic she's 11 she's into sports she's um we just moved back up to New York so the difference from North Carolina to New York is really really yeah so like you know her friends down there are very naive they're very so I, I mean I worry about that but but other than that She's doing fantastic and and excited for the move. So now that I have more time, because my family is all in New York and everything, um, I'm bumping around training at the school in New, in New York, and I'm doing some stuff with Wild Wrestling in California, flying back and forth, and uh, yeah. We'll see where it takes me. Excellent. And these things that happen to us I, I obviously changes our perspective. And uh, if we're good, I feel if we're good students of life, it, it changes our outcome, uh, our perspective, and how we want to go forward, I would guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Rob Terry, what's up with you, man? How's it going? You know, same old thing, just uh, with uh, TNA Impact Wrestling and just loving it down there and, uh, you know, doing my thing, doing what I do. Right now, you're on the ride. You're just going with it. Absolutely. You know, these are the early years for me, and um, I'm still, pro you know, progressing and uh, just getting into the business that I absolutely love and that I want to continue and, and go as long as I can. And, you know, this is what I've always wanted to do since I was so young. So now that I'm doing it, it's, you know. So you're, you're, you're embracing the innocence of it, right? Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Yeah, this is it for me. On a personal level, I know you're on the road all the time, but what do you do during the day for like a little leisure or chilling out or, you know, me time, so to speak? Um, you know, I really try and keep as proactive as I can in between the wrestling and such and obviously training and uh, trying to get in the best shape that I can be in, you know, is a big part of my life. So. Uh, uh, it, it takes a lot of my a time out of my day to, to do that, if you like. But you know, I still try and spend as much time with my wife, and um, you know, just try and enjoy myself. And recently went to the Olympia, um, a big bodybuilding fan, and, and checked out the scene there. And you know, it was great. So we had a great time, my, my wife and I. And uh, and now, now it's back here, and um, I'm back to the wrestling. So 
when do you find time to gym it, man? Whenever I can. Whenever yeah, I can. You know, bodybuilders, right? Yeah. Uh, do you know the bodybuilders from way back? I'm a big fan of the older generation of bodybuilders. If you like, you know, when I first started, um, Arnold Zero, all those guys, they were huge, absolutely huge influence in. Frank Zane? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, those guys, you know, they, they had the awesome physiques, and uh, I really sure, idolized those. <laughs> I, like it. I know that I know this guy knows a thing or two about that as well. Yeah, so yeah, right. yeah. I was born in the fifties. So oh, that's good. You're a baby boomer, man. That's right. Why the hell am I still bouncing around? <laughs> you guys are in great shape. Yeah, but I'm like that 1965 El Dorado you see on a <laughs> on the corner of one of those. Uh, Carl Lotz and Lincoln Avenue and, and, and Venice Beach and you, <laughs> you look at it and you say, wow, it's only got 60,000 miles. And whenever it's original, you realize that back then at 99,000 they turned. Then you take a magnet to the car and you realize the entire thing's Bondo and you go, well, it looked good from the road. <laughs> well, listen, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I thank you for being candid, honestly. It's, it's awesome. I thrive on this stuff on the back end. I, I've always thrived on the back end. <laughs> <laughs> That's another show, man. You know that. Exactly. That's another show. We're out of time. We're, yeah, breath. we're out of time. <laughs> a breath of fresh air. <laughs> That's when the bumper comes in. I can't believe that this man right here is actually going to mess with my First Amendment rights of freedom of speech. <laughs> I'm going to have the ACLU up his, you know what, so fast. On the back end again. Dave, full circle. That's right. Full circle. <laughs> <laughs>